Hello there, God bless you. You are welcome to Prophetic Intercession with Amel. It's always an honor for me, a huge privilege to bring you prophetic messages from the Lord. I always feel excited each time God gives me a prophetic word because I know it's a word in season for someone and God is going to be using um, me to minister to you and, um, you know, telling the mind of God to you at a particular point in time. So God bless all our first timers. If this is the first time you're coming across this channel, a special welcome to you. Thank you so much. I really do hope that God is going to use this channel to minister to you and help you know God better and help you identify the voice of the Lord you hear even better in the mighty name of Jesus. To my returning subscribers, you already know that I love you. You are always in my prayers. You are always in my thoughts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God has given me a prophetic message, but before I release that word, I'd like us to pray. Father, we thank you for your word that is about to come forth. I pray, oh God, that is going to fall on a fertile soil. I pray that as they listen to your word, they will not harden their hearts. I pray that your word is going to serve as a light unto their path and a lamp unto their feet that will illuminate their path in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. While you were away, someone visited and did something remarkable. While you were away, someone visited and did something remarkable. The Lord gave me this prophetic word. And he says it's very dangerous for you to leave your place of assignment because things are not going on well. It's very dangerous for you to leave where you are supposed to be because things are not working as planned. Where you, When you are where you are supposed to be, it doesn't matter what happens. You should know that God is there. For example, God might tell you to go to a particular place. And because life is very difficult in that place, you decide to leave. Why? Because life is difficult. But that is the place of your divine assignment. That is where God has assigned you to. Or God might send you into someone's life to be of help to them or to be their divine helper or to be their partner. And while you are with them, things are not all that rosy. Things are really difficult and you feel like I deserve better. I should just leave. One of the questions you should always ask yourself is, why am I here? Does God want me here? Am I at the right place? If the answer to all these questions is yes, then you have to learn to tarry. You have to learn to persevere. You have to learn to be there until that which God had proposed for you in that place is manifested. One thing I know for sure is that God will not forsake his own. God will not abandon his own. Every time you try to run away for safety, you, you most likely would encounter doom. Every time you want to run away because you're looking for yourself, you're looking out for yourself, you're looking out for your happiness, you're looking out for your provision, you're looking out for your own life, you are, you are most likely to end up in doom. The Bible says that those who love their life will lose it. But those who want to lose their life for the sake of God, they are going to gain it. Each time you are thinking about you and not about the assignment of God or not about why God wants you in that place, you will eventually end up regretting. Always ask yourself, why am I with this person? Why am I in this place? Why am I doing this job? Why am I on this career path? What am I doing here? If the answer is God let you there, no matter what is happening, you've got to stay there because wherever the will of God takes you, the grace of God is sufficient to keep you. I'm going to take that all over again. Wherever the will of God takes you, the grace of God is sufficient to keep you. The hand of God is sufficient to provide and protect you while you are there. Look at the case of Naomi. The Bible says it came a point in time where there was, there was famine in Bethlehem. But Bethlehem, the Bible says, is the house of bread. It means it's a house where there is always supposed to be food. But for some reason, at that particular season, there was no food in Bethlehem. And so Elimelech and wife Naomi decided to journey to the land of Moab, where it was more fruitful at that given point in time. They decided to look out for themselves and they left the land of Bethlehem.
Of course, they went to Moab, they found food, but they encountered misfortune. They lost their two sons. Elimelech lost his life, and Naomi was left to tell the story. Naomi was left as a widow and as a mother who has lost two children. But the Bible says something happened while they were away. Something happened. Because not everybody left Bethlehem. People were still there. Now, Ruth chapter 1 and verse 6. It says that, Then she set out with her daughter-in-law to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in Moab how the Lord had taken care of his people of Judah in giving them food. So another Bible version said she heard that God had visited Bethlehem while they were away and he gave them food. So she decided to go back there. But guess what? She did not go back the same way she left. She had encountered misfortune, lost her husband, lost her two, two children. But the people she left there, God took care of them. They tarried in that place despite the difficulty. They tarried in that place despite the famine. And guess what? When they went back, they met Boaz. He was so rich. God had blessed him. He was so rich. Boaz did not make his wealth out of Bethlehem. Boaz made his wealth in the land of Bethlehem. He, he stayed there in the time of famine. And when God visited, God blessed them. But when Naomi went back into the land of Bethlehem, she became a beggar. Because when God visited, she was not there to benefit of the blessings of God. She was not there. So she went back into a blessed land as a beggar. Why? She could not tarry. She could not be patient. Not really about her, but she and her husband. And sometimes when I share this story, I don't want to really um, um, blame Naomi a lot because she was listening to her husband. She was following her husband's lead, just like Sarah followed her husband's lead. Sarah's husband, Abraham, at one point in time came and told her, um, we have to leave. God has said we should leave. When Abraham was following the instruction of God, he went along with his wife, Sarah, and Sarah did not object. The same thing happened to Naomi. She had to listen to her husband. Maybe that is why God protected her, because she was acting under obedience. She was obeying her husband. That is why God preserved her life. But Elimelech could not leave, survive, or the two sons could not survive. In essence, God is sending me to tell someone here under the sound of my voice, wherever God has placed you, no matter what is happening, stay there. God is never going to leave nor forsake you. He will always find a way to take care of his own. He will always find a way to protect his own. He will always find a way to provide for his own. He will not let you encounter misfortune. In the mighty name of Jesus. Did you receive this word with gladness? May the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.